Today we will be exploring the Isle of Lewis, starting with the beautiful Bosta Beach and the nearby Iron Age house. We will then continue our trip to the Callanish Stones, followed by a quick visit to the Broch. At the end, we will drive back to the island's capital, Stornoway, where we will give you an exclusive insight into what it's like to stay at Lewis Castle. Good morning folks, join us on a tour through the Isle of Lewis, with our first stop being Bosta Beach. just arrived at Bosta Beach and it's a beautiful day, we're really lucky with the weather. This is all like right on the other side of the island, we've literally just cut across the whole way. The way we drove? Yeah. Yeah, we drove from Stornoway to Bosta Beach and it took about 44 minutes? Uh, yeah, yeah, about 45 40 minutes. Yeah. Now you feel Whoa. like you, now you wish you'd brought your song and stuff. Yeah. But it'll be absolutely freezing. It would be freezing. But it's absolutely beautiful. So from where you park, it's over there. You park over there, you can't park directly at the beach. And it's about a five minute walk from the car park to the beach. Bossa Beach is a smaller beach. It's not huge, but it's quite sheltered, as you see. And it's surrounded by all these sheep and highland cows as well. So it's absolutely beautiful. The site is now scheduled as an ancient monument and is in the care of the Venera Historical Society. So Bosta Beach is here and then you can walk here to the Iron Age village. Let's have a look. So this is the first one. In memory of Noreen McIver, a little lady with a big heart of Venera, its people and its history. Can I actually go in it? Can I go in? Yeah. Wow, so you can actually go in there. Let's see. Oh no. Oof. No, you're joking. You can't go in there, I eh? No, it's oh, it's chained. No, it's chained. We you can't go in there. I wouldn't have thought that you would be able... I didn't think it would be something you could go in. No. I thought it was just like a room. Yeah. But it's actually got like a 
Shall we walk to the next one? Yeah. A storm exposed stone walls of the ancient village which had lain hidden under sand dunes at Boston Beach in 1992. Four years later, the site was excavated to reveal a well-preserved settlement of houses that dated back to the late Iron Age of 400 to 800 AD. Located in a small valley with streams, a beautiful beach and rich fishing waters, Boston would have been a perfect home for these early dwellers. The Iron Age house at Boston Beach is open to visitors throughout the summer months and gives a fascinating insight into how early settlers lived. Right, we have no clue where our next stop is because we actually had planned the route before we left to Bosta Beach <laughs> and can't remember the next stops and of course we don't have any internet so there's only one road we'll just have to go back wait until we have internet and then see where our next stop is. We're just driving back from Bosta Beach and we found a wee honesty box gift shop and I got a wee fright when I just looked out of the window seeing this. Oh wow, some lovely mugs and then some Harris Tweed magnets. A wee bag. A wee bag, yeah. Oh, and a tea towel. Yeah. I love Lewis tea towel. Oh. Oof. So, by the way, it's Sunday, right? And all the shops are closed. But if you need anything, you can go to these We Got gift shops. That's cheap in a supermarket. I know, that's what I'm saying. I think, <laughs> I think some of the stuff's actually as cheap as it is a supermarket. Look, a pound twenty. Aye. And then 50p in a pound for the tea bag. Yeah. A, oh, what a great idea. Yeah. They've got a, they've got a camera. Oh, have they got like a camera? A, you know, that this guy would be watching you anyway if you're taking anything without paying. driven from Bosta Beach to the Callanish Stones and if you're coming here then don't worry about the private road um, that you will be driving because we nearly didn't drive there although Google Maps told us to but it's right you just have to drive along and then at the end you'll see a car park and you'll see the stones as well. Right so I might have just been talking rubbish all along because it said it's Callanish Stone Circle 2 and we were having a look at the stones thinking they're not very many. Oh look, there's more over there. Where? Over there. Oh, they're more over there. Ah, oh, right. See, I thought we had come to the wrong ones, but let's see. It's probably like a little bit an Aran, mm. the Macri Moor. Oh, well, there's different bits. Yeah, different bits, so it's not just like one stone circle. just park at the circle two and then walk from circle two to the other circle because there's like a wee path as well it's quite um boggy the the um way part of it so you do need to have some good shoes
turns out I was kind of talking rubbish. The main Cavendish stones, theoretically I think you could walk there, but it's better I think to drive. Um, and it is signposted and you do not have to drive up um, a private road. And then there's a wee cafe in here that you can visit. Everything on the island is basically shut on a Sunday, which is pretty different to the mainland in Scotland. So you, you know, when you come here, you need to keep that in mind um, for buying shop, you know, groceries and anything else. You can't really buy anything. The Kalanish standing stones are a cross-shaped setting of stones erected 5,000 years ago. They actually predate England's famous Stonehenge monument and were an important place for ritual activity for at least 2,000 years. It's not exactly known why the standing stones were erected, but it is assumed that it was an astronomical observatory. Now that we've seen the real Cavendish stone circle, what is our next stop? We are at the block now. There's also a small visitor centre here. I didn't realise that it was going to be open. Let's have a look. Early archaeologists thought that the Brock Towers were built by invaders from southern England, displaced by the Roman invasion of AD 43. are among Scotland's most impressive prehistoric buildings. These stone roundhouses date from about 2300 to 2900 years ago and are found mainly in North and West Scotland. Ross were primarily dwelling places for the principal family in the area. They would have provided some protection against sporadic raiding but were not purely defensive structures. There, around, there's like two layers so that's the first one, this is the second one um, of walls and in between they're like, or they used to be stairs. After a great deal of exploring the island we drove back to Stornoway and to Luce Castle. If you're visiting the island you'll probably want to see the castle. Not only can you visit the lovely museum but you can also enjoy a coffee in the cafe. However, you may not know that you can even stay at Luce Castle, so let's check it out. So this is the ballroom, they also host weddings here.
right, we've now arrived at our apartment. Let me give you a wee room tour or flat tour. Right, the first door isn't opening. I haven't got a key with me, which was very good. So you come in here, all the light goes on straight away. And then here is the first, well, one bathroom. It's a lovely bathroom and the view. Then we'll look at the biggest bedroom. It's a ensuite bedroom, but it doesn't have the great views to the harbour. And then our bathroom. Get the light on. No shower curtain, which is a big plus because I absolutely hate shower curtains. Anyway, so that is our bathroom. And then we also have two additional bedrooms. This is the first one. Oh, the doors are quite heavy. Look at the view. That was our ferry over there. And it was, well, just under a 10 minute drive. I told my parents, look, if you get lost to Lewis Castle, on your way to Lewis Castle from the ferry, then I'm sorry, but I can't help you. They got off the ferry first, and we arrived first at Lewis Castle because they got lost. <laughs> How did they manage that? Anyway, they're here now, and both of the bedrooms also have a sink. What I really like is that we have got enough storage room, which is brilliant. The last bedroom is just at the living room, and this it's this one. Again, it has a sink and some storage room. And then, again, we've got the brilliant views. It's a really like bright flat, which is lovely. And up to six people, I believe, can stay here, which is great. And I don't know how we managed to put stuff everywhere. We've only been here for 20 minutes. And then we have, well, more windows here and another wee one over there. So we've got a huge telly here and a wee living room situation. And then we also have some games that we might be playing later. And then we also have a huge kitchen table. And then we have a beautiful clean and tidy kitchen. So yeah, that was the flat. So we paid £1,040 for six nights and when I checked about three weeks ago it would have been about £1,500 for five nights. The way I got it so cheap was on booking.com. I booked honestly maybe a year in advance and I know it sounds crazy but it was um, free cancellation and I only had to pay I think a few, two or three days before we arrived here and yeah, I'm also on Genius Level 3, so I got about 10% discount. But if you do book in advance, then it is really cheap. And also up to six people can stay here, which would make it even cheaper. Well, folks, thanks so much for joining us exploring the Isle of Lewis. If you've got this far in the video, why not like and subscribe? You'd really support the channel. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye!